we may need to refer more explicitly to the return value that we want to pull back from a subroutine when there's more than one way in which we're going to exit our subroutine. Let's take a look at an example. I'm going to set up a very simple subroutine here called compare numbers. And this is going to compare two numbers and see which one's bigger and print out a result. Now because we only want to compare two numbers, we can actually specify the number of arguments that we want this function to receive. We can do that by enclosing within round brackets after the function name as many symbols as we want arguments to be passed to this particular subroutine. And the symbols we use are the same symbols as we use at the beginning of variables to denote what kind of variables they are. So two dollar signs would mean two scalar values. A dollar sign and an at would be a scalar and an array. We're sticking with scalars for the moment because we're just comparing two numbers. And let's give them names within our subroutine here. We're going to pull them out of the arguments array and then we're going to run a certain set of conditions by them. This is the point at which we want to get out of our subroutine. Now we could simply say print first is bigger than second, but this has a disadvantage both of forcing the output to be passed to standard output when this may not be what we want to do with the return value of our compare numbers subroutine. We may want, for instance, to add the return value to an array or set a variable to this value or to print this out to a text file or do a whole range of other things with the return value. So we don't really want to be printing this piece of text out. Instead of using the print function, we can use the return keyword. And the return keyword is a way of explicitly declaring that we want to return this value and at the same time we're exiting our subroutine. So we quit out of the subroutine and we go back into the rest of the program flow. We can have as many different return lines as we want within our subroutine. Although it can get a little confusing if we get too convoluted. So here's our subroutine put together. And you can see there are three lines in which the word return is used. But a subroutine will only return one value. And that's even discounting the fact that the returns are enclosed within if and else if blocks. As soon as the Perl script hits the return line, it'll exit the subroutine and will discard the rest of the processes as described within that subroutine's definition. So now we can print the result of the compare numbers function with the numbers 3 and 1 passed as arguments. 3 here is shown to be bigger than 1. So our little subroutine works pretty well and we've learned how to specify particular return values explicitly rather than implicitly.